Hi guys! Last year I made this drum set out of paper, toothpicks, plastic straws, aluminum, and some wire. And I've been dying to make guitars to match. So I finally did so, and I gave them some of the classic guitar shapes. I made a Stratocaster, a Les Paul, and of course a Flying V. But not only did I want to get them recognizable shapes, I also wanted to give them recognizable paint jobs. So to do this, I looked to the music greats. I stole Kirk Hammett's Flying V, but I did go with the classic silver instead of the gold features. I went to Buckethead's Les Paul. And of course, Jimi Hendrix's Stratocaster. This is the one he burned on the stage in 1967. I'm Cat Williams, and I hope you enjoyed this video. So to make the guitars, once again, I'm going with paper. Cardstock or any sort of stiff paper will do and also a small little piece of copy paper. In addition to this, I'm using some beads. These are two millimeter um, rhinestones and two millimeter pearls. You can find them in any nail supply store, mail order, or even dollar stores. A tea light candle, a four inch piece of wire that you can always recover from a twist tie, some stick pins, and a skein of silver, silver embroidery thread. Now I could draw pretty well, so I drew the patterns freehandedly, but of course if you can't, I'm going to put the measurements for each of the guitars underneath in the description box, and you can always find the picture online and blow them up into that size. Then I cut off just the bodies of the guitars, but preserve the neck and the head as well. I made four each, and then I glued two at a time together, two for the back and two for the front. Did the same thing with the head and neck. But remember, you did cut off part of the neck with the body of the guitar, so you want to extend the rest of the pieces to fit the drawing. You're going to glue one to the front, glue the half piece underneath it, and glue two to the back. And then I cut a small notch into one eighth of an inch of a strip of paper. And my papers are about six inches long each, but I didn't use all of them. And then using some super glue, I just went on ahead and outlined the guitar shape with that strip of paper. Use clamps to hold them in place. And when you get about halfway around, you can add the back of the guitar and glue that in as well. Then continue to enclose the shape with the strip of paper. Now some guitars have little details along the back and the front, so in this case the Stratocaster has a little dent on the inside of the longer portion at the back, so I use my ball tool to trace that in. I also use my ball tool to etch in a little line where I can tilt the head back on the Flying V and also on the Les Paul. And then the Stratocaster has a little piece at the front where the strap attaches, so I used my ball tool to indent that as well. Now you could either use wood filler for this part or just some wood glue like I did. And I just used a little wood glue to fill in any of the gaps between the paper strip and the actual body of the guitar. And then I went through and sanded it.
Then I took all three guitars outside and I gave them a blast from a white spray primer. The Les Paul I painted with some solid white because that's a cream color that I'm going to custom mix. But the other two I painted a light khaki for the Stratocaster and a black for the Flying Boot. And because the handle of the Flying View is black, I painted that as well. But I'll paint the other handles in just a moment. For now, I wanted to go with the Stratocaster because this has the most detail to it. So I'm going to use a watercolor pencil for this, but a regular color pencil will work just fine. You just need it so the paper so that the pencil will smudge. So I'm just putting the line in and then using my finger to pull it out towards uh, into the beige or khaki color a little bit. Then I went through with some red paint and tried my very best to blend the paint into the color pencil. Don't forget to paint the sides of the guitar as well. And once it's dry, you can go ahead and start painting the necks and the heads of each of the guitars. If there's a particular guitar you're trying to copy, just look for pictures of it online or in real life and paint the heads and necks accordingly. Then turn the guitars over, and I'm just doing the Flying V and the Stratocaster, even though I did trace a Les Paul too. And you want to trace the front of these. The Stratocaster and the Flying V had a little plate on the front, so I traced the front of those. And then I drew in on the inside a smaller line inside the trace line, since the trace line is larger. And then I made a pattern for the shaping on the front. Then I cut that out of plain white copy paper and dry fit it in place before gluing. Then I added the little ovals that go underneath the strings and then started to paint. So this particular Stratocaster has several little um, flowers and like a bird shape and a bunch of little curly cues in red, black, and turquoise. So I did my very best to put all of those shapes in but not everything is there, so it's not 100% of a match, as is, in most cases, most things in miniature are not. And then I used a little bit of silver paint and my ball tool to go back through and etch a line around the plate, and also to put in the little rivets that attach the plate to the rest of the guitar. Now I haven't put the rivets on the Les Paul yet, but I'll do that in a moment. But you can see the rest of them have the rivets in place. And the Les Paul, I did do a silver line around the front of the guitar. And then I used a small piece from the tin of the tea light candle. And I cut out a rectangle that was about a quarter inch long. Then I used some skeins from some embroidery thread, and this is just silver thread, about 50 cents in any sort of Michaels or craft supply store. Each skein of embroidery thread separates into six separate threads. So I pulled those six separate threads out and cut those into four inch pieces. And then glued six each onto the little rectangle of aluminum. I bent them slightly over my finger and then glued them to the front of the guitars. 
don't worry about adjusting the strings just yet. You need to put these little um, pieces along the neck of the guitar first. I think they're called frets, but I could be wrong. If anyone knows anything about guitars, feel free to correct me. And these should be spaced pretty narrow at the base. And as they go further up, they should be further and further apart. Then I stretch my string all the way out to the top and glue them in place. Now I cheated a little bit and guitars have pegs at the top along the front, but I was also putting them on the side and I just got a little lazy. So I painted my pegs on the front and I did put actual pegs on the side. And I make the pegs out of just regular stick pins. I used a pair of pliers and I mashed down the head of the stick pin. And then I clipped it off so that I only had a tiny little piece. Then I used the pin part of the stick pin and put holes into the sides of the head of the guitar. I filled the holes with super glue and glued the little sideways stick pins in place. Three on each side for the Les Paul and the Flying V, and six on one side for the Stratocaster. Now I don't show this, but I did paint silver markings at the top for the pins where the guitar strings are supposed to wrap around. Now for Buckethead's guitar, he has two little red buttons on it, so I painted on a red base, and then I added on the head of a stick pin for the actual button part and painted the whole thing red. And then for the rest of the little dials and controls on the guitar, I'm using two millimeter rhinestones. And I painted five of them white for the Les Paul and the Stratocaster. But I left the black ones plain for the flying feet. And then I used a little glue at the tip of the stick pin to be the little switch at the bottom. And I pushed a hole into the guitar and glued the little switch in place. And if you put a little glue at the top, you can paint it. But I'll show you that a little bit more with the Stratocaster. This has a little switch too, but it's a longer one. So I used the stick pin that I bent at several angles. And you can see at the very tip, there's a little mound of white glue. Allow that glue to dry, and then paint it in the colors according to the guitars. Then give your guitars a quick coating of glaze or varnish, and that's it. You're done. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I appreciate you. Bye.